Recently I've been doing some CFD modeling on intake manifolds. You may have seen a video I posted a few years ago that showed some results from a previous model. This video will provide more accurate results on a similar model and include some technical explanation. This model is very similar to the one in the previous video, only with one major difference. This was configured so that the runner was an outlet for air, drawing air into the port at approximately 100 meters per second, while the plenum opening is a free inlet. This simulates the inlet valve opening on one cylinder while at wide open throttle. The old model was configured so that air was flowing from the throttle and then finding its way to the one runner that was a free outlet. In other words, that model is showing a transient situation, like what happens when the throttle is open suddenly, and the inflow of air is filling the plenum. While this does make for a visually interesting result, it does not paint an accurate picture of air distribution when the engine is running through the revs at wide open throttle. Just by looking at the new model, it is clear that the runners look much more similar to each other than they did in the previous test. You can see a bit of boundary layer separation on the number one runner, but in general they look pretty even. It gets a little more interesting when we look at the pressure. These numbers are reference to atmospheric pressure, which was the starting condition inside the manifold. This pressure measurement is taken at the lowest pressure region, which is at the high velocity area at the center of the runner. What we see here is a progressively lower pressure in the runners as we move from number one on the left to number four on the far right. The absolute pressure difference between number one and number four is 3.8%. This may not sound like much, but if we assume the pressure in the runner were correlate directly to volumetric efficiency, this would amount to roughly half a point difference in air fuel ratio. For example, if the cylinder were to not individually be tuned for fuel, you could have cylinder number one at 12.5 to one and number four at 12 to one. Depending on how close to the bleeding edge of power you're trying to achieve, this could be significant. Although I suspect that this 3.8% difference is pretty good compared to many intake manifold designs. After reviewing these results, I tried getting rid of the fancy velocity stacks raised off the floor of the plenum and instead went for a larger radius entry sunk down into the floor. I suspected this would help with air distribution by moving the inlet of the runners away from the flow of air through the length of the plenum. What I found was a similar gradient between runners 1 through 4, with number 1 having the highest pressure in the runner. It was slightly better than the previous design, in that the pressure difference was 3.6% between runners 1 and runner 4. This is only a 0.2% improvement over the other design, so it's hard to say if that is significant compared to the numerous other variables being controlled for in this simple simulation. What was perhaps more significant was an overall increase in the minimum pressure compared to the last model. That manifold averaged 78.6 kilopascals in those low pressure regions, while this manifold saw an average of 82 kilopascals in the same areas. I believe this would result in an actual higher volumetric efficiency, which of course means more power. If there is anything to conclude, it is that it seems a larger radius on the runner entry is more important than having a full profile that wraps around on the sides. With the limited space within a plenum, I would be inclined to focus on getting a nice and smooth radius entry into each runner. Of course, this is just one small aspect of designing an inlet manifold. In reality, this is a chaotic system that can never be fully modeled accurately. Things like resonance are also hugely important to the design, and there is all sorts of reversion and scavenging going on that is going to be influenced heavily by the cam profile and the RPM. The only way to know for sure is to do real-world testing, but we'll have to save that for a later video.